This episode of Techzilla is brought to you by Netflix. Got a problem with your PC? It's not working the way you want it to? You might think it's a black art. You might think it's strange and twisted and tricky. The truth is though, if you take your time and walk through it logically, PC troubleshooting is pretty easy. And we actually have the guru of PC gaming, hardware and PC troubleshooting, Lloyd Case, to help you through it. Welcome back to the show, sir. Hey, how's it going? Good, man. Is this your first 2012 appearance? Yes, Exciting. It is. I was in Germany till the end of the year and then CES happened, so you guys were kind of recovering from that. So here I am. <laughs> <laughs> Never happened to see. I just remember a week of shiny objects. Speaking of which, is that a yes. 7970? This is a Radeon HD 7970XFX. It Ooh. runs at one gigahertz. And how many watts is it pulling? Uh, at idle, about 18. Oh, that's not bad. At it's full load, maybe 320 or so. 320. Yeah, 320, 340, yeah. Beware the gaming on the 500 watt power supply. <laughs> yes. And the nice thing about this, uh, it, it has this thing called long idle, too. Right. You know you know when you're in a screen, it goes blank, and after you walk away from it for a while, three watts. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's, so it's that's amazing good. to watch what they're And doing. the thing is, is freaking fast. I mean, if you're running on a 1920 by 1200 monitor or something, you don't need anything else. How much? Six, 600 bucks. Five fifty to six hundred dollars. I'm gonna put this gently down in the anti-static <laughs> bag without that's, moving my feet. That's the rub. But uh, this guy, coupled with like something like a Intel Core i7 3820, mm -hmm. which is like their three hundred dollar Core i7 2011 processor, that sweet sweet combo. And if I have two of those, can I game across like multiple thirty-inch monitors? Multiple 24-inch monitors. I'm not sure anything <laughs> does multiple 30-inch monitors at high frame rates. At least not with grace and style. Right. Speaking of grace and style, troubleshooting process. Yes. I always think of it as like being, you know, like gas engine. Is there air? Right. Is there spark? Is yeah. there fuel? Well, I mean, the problem is a PC is is somewhat complicated in right. that that because there's this software hardware mix, you never know what's going. It, it's sometimes hard to figure out what's going on. Right. And I was reminded of this recently. We'll get to an example that I ran into, ran through. But the process uh, is fairly simple and straightforward, right? First of all, you think of what's my situation. You know, I mean, yes, I have a blue screen on my. What does that mean? Right. But there are other things to think about, like. Is my room's 89 degrees? Maybe I blue screen because my processor overheated and it's really cool. You know, there's a lot of other things that happen before you say, gee, what's wrong with my PC? Right. Um, then you say, what's changed recently? Well, in my case, <laughs> well, I'll get, to my, I'll get to what happened in my case. You know, did, did I change something? Did right. I add a new component? Did I install some new software? Uh, did Windows do an update? I mean, there's some did invisible things. Did the air conditioning things. go out? Yes, sorry. Did, did the air all the air conditioning units right. in the neighborhood suddenly turn on right. at one in the morning while my or computer was working? Or the change could be something gradual, like, right. when's the last time I blew all the dust out of my computer? Oh, <laughs> six months ago. Let me think about that. Uh, or bit rot or right. cruft. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> There's always that. Um, so you know, you think about what's changed, and then you think about um, what does what are the symptoms, right? right? What are the symptoms? I mean, I'm getting a blue screen. Those little codes mean something, and Google is your friend. If you don't have a second PC, you grab your smartphone or whatever, and you do a Google search on that search area code. And it's amazing what useful information you can find. Knowing that it's a disk controller problem suddenly narrows things down, or knowing that right. it says you have a v video problem, then you're narrowing things down. Also, little things like sometimes it'll pull a file name up mm -hmm. with that blue screen, and that file name says, oh, I just installed my new Radeon drivers, and that's a driver, you know, so there's, there's all kinds of things that you can reveal. It's always so funny. It's like. You know, the whole thing, like, doctor, it hurts when I do this. Well, right. if your machine always crashes when you launch this program, it's right. a strong sign that the problem is with that program. That's right. Or well, that's, that's a repeatable <laughs> problem, right? Is the problem right. repeatable or is it intermittent? You know, if I'm having a problem once every three days and the symptoms are different, is it the same problem or is it just Windows being, you know, Windows? So what, um, what's, your, what's your sort of baseline, you know, you know, do because I I keep thinking of like it's it's so funny because there's so many ways to troubleshoot problems. Right. I mean, you know, well, there's a neat tool in the Windows called the Windows Reliability Monitor, and it's kind of hard. You have to dig down inside the System Management tool to find it, but it's neat because it gives you a, a sort of a running um, graph over time of what kind of problems you had, what applications have crashed, right. what applications have just sort of stopped working, you know, which is actually different from a crash. Right. And you know, those kinds of things, you know, when you had a driver problem, when the last update happened. It also tells you how long you've gone without a problem, which is kind of nice to know <laughs> as well. 
It's always like the uptime monitor on Linux boxes. Right. So if you know your your computer doesn't start, is it so, plugged in? Yeah. You know all those. Yeah, there's a walkthrough of the basic stuff. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about once you you, right. you know you have a working system and suddenly something stops stops working properly. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is uh, once you start doing once you sort of narrowed it down, you say okay, I think it's this. When you start making your changes, right. change one thing at a time. Don't say, oh my god, I'm going to change my processor, my memory graphics card. Is, oh, you know, even if it works, you say, well, I just spent 500 bucks, but something worked. What did I, you know, did I need to spend? And then the other thing to do is when that change doesn't work, you change something, oh, problem comes back. Back away from, back off the right. change and change something else. In other words, go back to your known state before. Do you like you know rolling back you know using some of the built-in tools to roll back the operating system to the last system known updates, good? Uh, the system update tool. Uh, right. What is that? What it's called? Uh, anyway, so it's kind of useful sometimes, but that's only sort of the the problem of making that change is that if you, you want to make sure <laughs> it that it changes a whole bunch of things, it changes a whole right. bunch of things. So again, sort of like you want to make that one change at a time kind of thing. That's sort of a last resort tool that I use. What do you do if like? You download, you're feeling a little aggro, you want the greatest performance, download the beta of a graphics driver and it crashes your, your, your GPU. Suddenly your graphics don't want to run. What do you do? Well, you can always get into safe mode because that's just a VGA driver, the dumb VGA driver, right? And then you can uninstall. Typically you can uninstall a driver in safe mode. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you can't install a new driver in safe mode, so you want to just sort of nuke it. Or you can use system restore to back off that old driver install and then go back to your old one. Is there any problem you the see over and over and over and over and over again that you want to tell people about, like how to avoid it? Which what it, is, is it? What, what's your like? What's what's the problem that happens over and over again that you wish people would just? Oh, know about? Uh, the biggest problem is overheating because they let their dust accumulate in the system. That is the <laughs> that is the single most uh, th th problem I, I encounter in my own lab right. and in other people's. Uh, people will call me and said, "My system's running hot. What's going on?" I said, "Have you opened up your case recently? Is there dust? <laughs> Canned air." It's amazing how much that difference that can make. And be careful about sticking a vacuum cleaner into your computer. No. It's a it's a great way to actually hammer little tiny surface mounted components right. off of the And if you uh, use something like a Dyson, you can actually suck something off <laughs> unintentionally. <laughs> so you gotta be careful about that. There are these little little USB vacuums that are kinda nice, but really canned air. You know, you take your graphics card out of your system. You take your system outdoors or right. into some place where <laughs> not your office, and then you blow the dust out with canned air. It's it's kind of funny once you once you decat for the inside of a computer, mm -hmm. you start to become really maniacal about figuring out how to right. filter all of the inlets right. on a computer. Yeah, and if you're one of those fanatical guys who built your system so it has positive air pressure on the inside, you'll still end up with dust sometimes. It's kind of amazing. Yeah. Um, so let me talk about a case in point, a okay. really complex one I ran into last week. I built this wonderful new system, uh, Core i7 3830X uh, uh, K. Sorry. Um, you know, 12 gigabytes or 16 gigabytes of RAM, new graphics card, all this jazz, right? Ran great. Suddenly I started getting blue screens. I thought, what happened? Well, the change that I had made, now here's where it gets more complicated. The change I made was added a new graphics card, right? So I did this mm -hmm. new graphics card, so I thought that was, a gra that was a problem. Uninstalled it, put in a new, different graphics card, problem came back. <laughs> I got, it, this is a blue screen error. But the blue screen error changed in a subtle way, so it's like, oh, maybe it's something else. And so it looked like maybe it's a memory error, so I swapped out memory after reinstalling the graphics card I had before, right? And then still same, same problem, similar symptoms, power supply. Change the power supply because sometimes power supply will result in flaky behavior and everything else. Again, the problem comes back. Remember, every step along the way, I'm re reinstalling my old components right. once I determine that those aren't the problem. Finally, I decided that it's a motherboard issue because it started happening more frequently mm -hmm. and other components started failing and every, wouldn't boot every now and then saying that the video card's bad when the video card wasn't bad. Right. So I did the big motherboard swap. Everything's good again. So it was like a, a, a sort of carefully walking through the process and understanding what wasn't failing <laughs> and going back to what was working right. You and I are probably never, in your case, like at least nine PCs with sort of poolable parts. I usually have at least two or three PCs right. I can swap parts between. Right. What, do, what does somebody do if they like have their computer, their one computer? Right. It depends on whether it's a build your own computer, right. if they build it themselves, or if it's a, you know about an HP computer or, or a Falcon Northwest system or whatever. Um, you know, then you go to the tech support, first of all, uh, and see if they can help you out. Sometimes they can. Uh, a lot of the uh, companies now, I was surprised, for example, uh, at some of the big companies will, uh, can log into your computer and check it out. Hmm. Uh, sometimes it's helpful, sometimes not, but at least they can get you started. Um, the other thing you can do is, is um, I have discovered that the local white box shops charge a reasonable amount of money to walk through the process themselves. If you're, you know, you don't want to spend 
$200 new power supply right. and $50 in memory and, a new gra and another $200 to graphics card just to troubleshoot your system, right? right? So you take you to your local white box guy and he'll charge you maybe 100 bucks to find out what the problem is. And then it may cost you nothing because he may say, oh, it's just this cable is unplugged or whatever. <laughs> Hopefully yeah. they won't say that. Hopefully it'll be something right, good right. and expensive that's worthy yes. of the time. Yes, my, my favorite story is the, the most frustrating problem I've ever had was my Monitor, my computer wouldn't come on, my monitor was dark, what's going on? I get the beep, nothing's happening. And my daughter looks at and says, Dad, what's this plug? And my monitor was unplugged. Not the computer, the monitor. I was like, no, anyway. That's a little frustrating. <laughs> also a sign that even the best of us can do terrible, terrible things that irritate us and haunt us forever, right. or in my case, taunt me forever. Improbableinsights.com, that's, right. that's your website. What, yep. what are you working on right now? Uh, working on stuff for Max on PC, new graphic stuff. Got some uh, uh, stuff coming up on PC World. Uh, got a new website. Well, it's not a new website. It's part of you know Smugbug, right? Yeah. So, so I got LloydCasePhotography.com now. Cool. So I'm putting up some of my photos up there. You start doing more photography articles? Uh, or yeah. Or just more have, into just enjoying the actual uh, process? A little both. I'm gonna start writing a little more about photography too. Lloyd, good stuff as always. Take Thank care, you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, Lloyd's gonna be back next month. He's gonna be ready to answer your PC hardware questions. So do us a favor. Shoot us a question at techzilla at revision3.com. Put Lloyd Case in the subject line. And like I mentioned, you can always find Lloyd Case on Twitter at Lloyd Case. And his work is at Maximum PC and PC World. And of course, you can find more of his work at improbableinsights.com. Right now, let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors. Netflix. I love it. Why? Because it streams TV shows and movies directly to my house. Saves me time, saves me money, saves me hassle. If you Become a Netflix Unlimited member like me. You can instantly watch directly on your PC, your Mac, on your TV with an Xbox 360, a PS3, a Nintendo, a Wii, Netflix enabled Blu ray player, set top boxes, and HD TVs. It's so amazing. You can watch as many movies as you want, anytime you want. You can cancel anytime if you don't like it. I can't imagine why. And hey, you know what? We can get you a trial for free, a free 30 day trial membership. Go to netflix.com slash techzilla and sign up now. By the way, for our viewers across the pond, as they say, Netflix now available in the UK and Ireland. Our viewers there can get the same free trial as the US folks can. Check out netflix.co.uk slash techzilla or netflix.ie slash techzilla. Thank you for supporting us and thanks Netflix for supporting techzilla.